Hi, this is presentation number four. Um, I am Megan Derry and this is Mackenzie Corey. Um, we are going to be debating the theories of catastrophism and uni uniformitarianism. Um, I will be taking the side of um, catastrophism. So I'm going to start and then Mackenzie's going to go and then we're going to do a bit of a rebuttal and then wrap it up with a conclusion. So first I'm just going to give a little bit of a background on my side of things and I'm going to define the theory and then give evidence um, as to what initially supported the theory. Um, so starting off, cat catastrophism is a theory that was developed by George Curvier in 1810 and um, a lot of other scientists in his day advocated it. Um, and he discovered it while working in the uh, Paris Basin. Um, and while working there, he discovered something that was a bit out of uh, norm with the fossil record that was going on. Um, he noticed instead of like a continuity in the fossils, but that there was uh, several gaps. And in those gaps, he found that evidence of life would disappear and then abruptly reappear over the course of like a really, really long amount of time. Um, and so Curvier associated these gaps with mass extinction events. And from there, he developed the theory of catastrophism. So this theory is pretty much what it sounds like. Um, it states that over the course of history, um, nature and the physical world has been dotted or noted by sudden um, catastrophic events. And these events change the way that life developed, that the planet sh was shaped, and where the actual rocks were deposited. So a lot of people took his theory as a belief in an explanation for biblical events like the Great Flood or something, but he rejected that side of things and relied more on the scientific evidence of um, his theory. So I'm gonna talk a bit about the evidence real quick. Um, because the fossil record um, for a region showed these abrupt changes in species, Curvier used this to support the theory um, in that plants and animals uh, living in certain parts of the world where those catastrophic events would take place, um, such as great floods or like rapid mountain uh, formations were often killed off. So um, additionally, those new forms of life would or new forms of life would move into the areas where the initial species became extinct and um, that would result in the abrupt change of the fossil record. <laughs> um, and so a specific animal that um, Kerbier used to support this was the elephant. He noticed that there was fossils of a much larger elephant, elephant than what was living uh, currently in Africa and India. And he declared that they were a separate species and that the one that he was studying became extinct in one of the mass extinction events. Um, and he found this in many other um, species of large mammals, and this fossil evidence led him to propose that the Earth uh, went through sudden and abrupt changes, and that those sudden and abrupt changes would wipe out an entire species. So now Mackenzie's going to go and get her side. Um, so I'm going to talk about uniformitarianism. Um, this is the counter argument to catastrophism that Megan just discussed. Um, so uniformitarianism is an argument about the Earth's processes. It holds that all geological processes acting on the Earth have always acted on the Earth and that they've always been uniform enough to account for all of the geologic change that's ever occurred on Earth. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. It was first developed as the opposing point of view for cata ooh, mm. catastrophism, um, which was an idea of the British naturalists. Um, naturalists were kind of a weird mix of biologists and geologists from back in the day, um, but the sciences of biology and chemistry and physics weren't super big, so they had naturalists. Um, and catastro catastrophism holds that forces and events on Earth have happened every so often um, because a big catastrophe occurs. This will cause a mass extinction, maybe moving of tectonic, tectonic plates and things of that nature. Um, the term uniformitarianism was coined by William Whitwell um, and uniformitarianism presents an alternative explanation for the origin of Earth. Um, but before Whitwell, uh, Charles Lyell and James Hutton gave the idea of uniformitarianism its starting grounds. 
James Hutton published about uniformitarianism in his book called The Theory of Earth, um, and that was published in 1785. He argued that the Earth didn't change through catastrophes, but through many, many slow changes. He also argued that we can even see some of these processes today. Um, his today was obviously 1780, 1785-ish, but we can still see them. If we go outside, we can watch a riverbank um, or a rushing river take pieces of sand off its bank. We can watch the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle happening. Um, and a good example of this would be the rock cycle. Um, and that is something that un uniformitarianism helped science scientists to later discover and better understand. Charles Lyell is called the father of geology. Um, he was Charles Darwin's mentor. And so many of the ideas that uniformitarianism holds can be found in a lot of Darwin's work on the evolution of life and organisms. Um, an example of this would be the slow repeatedness of the same processes. So if you look at a cladogram, you can see, okay, here a trait evolved, way down here another trait evolved, way down here another trait evolved. Um, and Lyell wrote about his theory of uniformitarianism or his take on uniformitarianism in his three-part work. Um, this was called The Principles of Geology and it was published between 1830 and 1833. Uniformitarianism is, it pretty much has knocked catastrophism out of play. It, it led to so many other scientific discoveries. And like I talked before, we have the rock cycle, environmental cycles, like um, the water cycle, nitrogen, carbon cycles like that, and the theory of evolution. Um, like Megan said, a lot of people took catastrophism as a sort of explanation that biblical earth was real and that's how everything occurred. But uniformitarianism challenges that um, because, you know, we can see that the earth wasn't just created to be a home for humans. We have so much time before humans even happened that the earth was home to nothing and then little tiny organisms and then giant organisms and then life continued in this uniform cycle and then we have humans. And through the study of geologic processes, it's known that these supernatural theories aren't necessary for understanding Earth's geologic history. Uniformitarianism also challenged cat catastrophism, um, which was the most accepted theory at the time. Processes always have and always will act on Earth in the same way with the same intensity. Uh, so now we're going to go into a quick rebuttal and we're going to refute some things that the other has said. Um, so... Um kind of what Mackenzie was just saying, um, catastrophism was later rejected uh, by Charles Lyell and eventually by Charles Darwin. Um, and they are people who uh, doubted that a species could become extinct in one fail swoop of a catastrophic event and that it is, like Mackenzie said, a much slower, slower natural process. Um, and additionally, that while a species is becoming extinct, new species are forming while they are still becoming extinct. Um, and this eventually led to the discovery of evolution rather than them becoming extinct and something just randomly moving new. Um, but that being said, we know that, yes, his theory wasn't entirely true, but um, I'm going to argue that it isn't necessarily entirely false. Um, and that's because we know that 99% of all species that ever exist on Earth are now extinct. Um, and we also know that several times over the past six, 600 million years, life has experienced mass extinctions where half or more of a species alive at the time of said event um, were wiped out. And this was either due to asteroids, volcanoes, rapid changes of sea levels, and this was all things that um, Curvier suggested. And even if it wasn't an entire species like he was suggesting, it could have been the cause to that species eventually becoming wiped out. Um, and we know that uh, even if the even if the specific event didn't wipe out a species entirely, it still did change um, our planet, and it still eventually, consequently, changed life. Um, so, in addition to the slower natural process suggested by uniformitarianism, um, we can't entirely dismiss these catastrophic episodes, such as large meteor showers. Um, because they too shaped our earth and again, consequently our life. So lastly, um, the mass extinction 
suggested by Curvier, um, even if it was not a complete and total wipeout, um, it was still a start to an extinction and at the very least a very big start to a wipeout. Um, and in addition to that, these events mark really, really great transitions in life, giving new species the actual chance to take over the niches of old ones. Um, for example, mammals only dominated the land until after dinosaurs were wiped out and vanished 65 million years ago. For, so for us as humans, this is like pretty important so that we can be able to roam the land and don't have to worry about dinosaurs. So now um, Mackenzie's going to give a rebuttal. Yeah. Um, so the pretty big one, um, we both agree that catastrophism, while it is it's not quite right, it's also not quite wrong. Um, so every once in a while, big catastrophic events will come and change Earth's geologic history forever. Um, it doesn't mean that utilitarianism doesn't hold either. Um, so events like the ash eruption of Mount St. Helens or the asteroid that knocked out the dinosaurs or even humans creating a hole in the ozone layer, they're freak accidents. Um, freak accidents happen all the time. Hurricanes, while still sort of a cycle, um, they destroy parts of the East Coast all the time. Um, and it's a freak accident. So systems like the rock cycle, the water cycle, or even the nitrogen cycle, they all happen all the time, and they are the root of where Earth's geologic history lies. Um, and a quote that I have from uh, evolution.berkeley.edu says that Lyle's version of geology um, was uniformitarianism because of the fierce insistence that the processes that alter Earth are uniform through time. Um, Lyle viewed the history of Earth as being vast and directionless, and the history of life was no different. Um, so the geologic history of Earth lies in these uniform processes, but these catastrophes that happen can change these processes. So in confu ooh, con conclusion, we have that uniformitarianism and catastrophism, they're not accepted today, really. Um, but during their heyday, geology was one of the most advanced sciences. It helped with the understanding of Earth, Earth's functions, and the life on Earth. Both theories were used to unknowing, unknowingly to, the, to their believers as placeholders or catalysts for other scientific thoughts and ideas that weren't quite figured out yet. Um, other scientists, like physics, biology, and chemistry, they weren't as far ahead at the time as uh, geology was with uniformitarianism and catastrophism. So these, scientists, these sciences have helped refute the two ideas and finished fleshing out the scientific progress that they have laid the foundation for. Yeah, that's everything. Yep.